All right. All right, welcome everyone. Thank you, Sharon. Um, I'm gonna read the uh, meeting notice. Um, the date and time today is Thursday, November 18th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. Location, this is a virtual meeting that is only accessible remotely. Please join the meeting from your computer, tablet, smartphone, using the access below. Uh, pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this public meeting of the Lawrence Airport Commission is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of the members of the public will be permitted, but every effort to be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder that the persons who would like to listen to view this meeting while in progress may do so of any of the following access locations, Facebook, YouTube, uh, the Lawrence City Council. Um, all right, with that being said, um, welcome and we'll start. Uh, call to order. Carla, please. Sharon Birchall. Here. Andres Castillo. Bill Collins. Danya Amador Martis. Here. Here. Ernie Kurdamash. Here. Dan <laughs> Foley. Here. <clears throat> Bob Irving. Here. William Pedrick. All right. Thank you, Carla. Can we You're have welcome. approved minutes from October 21st, 2021? Do I have a motion on the floor? Yeah, I make a motion that we accept the uh, minutes from the October meeting. Second by Tanya Amador. Martis. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, the report, can we have uh, the finance committee, please? Christine. Yes, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me well? Yes. Good. So let's start with the revenues and expense report first for the month of October. And in the month of October, we had an excess of revenues in the amount of 16,857 with eight cents. That brings us to a year-to-date excess of revenues in the amount of $18,379.37. That would be the first report. Are there any questions? If not, I go ahead to the detailed expense report that is on the second page. Mm -hmm. We had all regular expenses. There's only one expense on the capital outlay that's on the very bottom, number 5850. You see the amount 4,333 with 80 cents. We did purchase a broom for our vent truck. And that comes very handy. We did have a broom before, but it was not functioning no longer and it's a very helpful tool to clean our ramps and all kinds of walks and paved if ways. i can jump in christine i will yes um we the broom it's a small rotary broom it's not like you're thinking with it's a push broom that you're pushing uh it actually uh spins and it's utilized for clearing sidewalks and can be used for snow, but uh, primarily what we were using it for was to remove the uh, waste from geese that were on the runways. Um, and their droppings were littering the taxiways and the runways. And it was difficult, the guys were going out there trying to push broom it and shovel it. And that wasn't serving a purpose. Uh, they were there forever and they weren't getting it. So this works very well and it uh, removes them from the pavement, 
which became an issue because it was so excessive that some of the pilots were concerned that it could be tracked up into their road, uh, retracting gear and it could be on the tires and it could interfere with some of the micro switches that the mechanisms that control their gear. So uh, we purchased it for that, but it's multi-purpose. It can be used for cleaning up sand and debris and leaves and grass clippings and all that out in the parking lot. And we've been using it to sweep the entrance road as well. And it also it could be used as a snow broom. So we'll be able to sweep the new sidewalk we got and reduce the amount of times we may have to put salt on there. So it's going to be advantageous for that. Christine may have talked, uh, mentioned the, the other broom we had. That broom was attached to the front end loader. We still have one of those. Uh, its bristles have worn down and it really wasn't an optimal uh, broom to use. But this being a simple attachment for the uh, Ventrac, uh, the guy's been using it all over the airport and it's small enough that it can fit into areas where it's more versatile than the, the larger broom was that we, uh, we picked up in 2004. Uh, I just should be Bill Collins joining us at this time. So that, that's all I had to say. I just wanted to explain that purchase. Thank you, Mike. Having worked too long at the airport, thinking that everybody understands the terminologies of what we use them for, right? Darn geese. I know. Well, it's, yeah, thankfully they've moved yes, on. Yes, yes. Have you considered a shotgun? <laughs> yeah, shotgun, collie dog, uh, hunters, actually. We've got people that are going to be coming in. Uh, the season was early in October, and now it's coming back again in December. And the amount that they're able to take is reduced, but at least um, it is something that we can um, minimize their impact on the airport. Now the crows have moved in. So now we're dealing with crows. Okay. Are there any questions to the detailed expense report? If not, we can look at the tenant payment status. I did send out an updated report in PDF format with hello, yellow highlights this afternoon. There are not too many changes. It was an early meeting with being it the 18th of November today. So we still have some payments that keep on trickling in, but all in all, it's been quite well. And I'm very satisfied with the collections and with the payments of our tenants. I open it up for any questions. <clears throat> Anybody have any questions for Christine? Oh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, you did a good job, Christine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you as well. All right. That would be it from my side. If nobody has any questions, do we have a uh, motion on the floor to accept the finance? I'll make a motion to accept it, Bob Irving. All right. Do we have a second? Second, Dan Foley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you so much, Christine. Thank you. You're welcome. Lease committee. Mr. Collins, I believe, has joined the call. He's the Moto E. He's mute. Well, do you know anything? Um, I do. I'll, I'll present it on his behalf and he can jump in and then correct me. Uh, basically, there's nothing new since last month. Uh, the only leasing related matter would be Boston Med Flight's um, proposal. And I want to thank Rick and Charlie. They're here on the call today. So um, we could either take up Boston Med Flight under this uh, committee report and just get a status update from them, or we can wait and go through all reports and then go down on the old business and call them up. I leave that at your discretion, Madam Chair. Uh, you know, they don't have to wait around. If it's okay with the board, yeah. you might if we do it now. So if they want you to leave, they could. That's yeah, fine. Okay. We can do it now, Mike. Okay. Um, I don't know who's going to speak, either Rick or Charlie, but um, just looking for an update of where you guys are in the process. 
And I know when we walked that hill, there was, there was a possibility of contemplating another site on the airport. And uh, just to get an idea, because there are other people that are interested in the land, I want to make sure that we're not holding people in advance when there's an opportunity to go forward. Okay, excuse me, Mike, do I ha do we have to make a motion to take it out of old business to speak or no? Uh, probably should. That's Thank you for correcting me. We should have a motion right. to take it out of old business. Okay. Can I have a motion on the floor from someone to take it out of old business? Yeah, I make a motion that we take it out of old business. Second. On the second. floor. Bob. Okay. All in favor? Bye. Bye. Okay, great. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, turn it over to Rick or Charlie. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and start. Um, you heard from Charlie last time, and he'll join in here with uh, more information. Um, I don't think I've spoken before the commission before, so I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Rick Kennan. I'm the chief operating officer for transport at Boston MedFlight. I've been with Boston MedFlight now for seven years, uh, background as a uh, military helicopter and fixed wing uh, pilot. And um, as I said, moved to Boston MedFlight about seven years ago, running at first the aviation program and now the aviation as well as the ground transport program. Um, like the old commercial was, I'm not just the owner, I'm also a customer. Um, I uh, am a lease partner for an aircraft that's based in, uh, in Lawrence. So I'm very familiar with the airport. I fly out there uh, just about every weekend. So besides Boston MedFlight, I also love, uh, I love your airport because it provides me the ability to, to fly regularly. So, so thank you for that. Um, with that said, um, I'll go ahead and give you an update on, the, uh, on Boston MedFlight's activity. Um, uh, looking at future expansion and development of a facility, a base facility uh, at Lawrence Airport. I think as Charlie told you um, in the last meeting, uh, we are uh, very interested in moving out of the lease arrangement that we have right now um, at the hangar uh, that's owned by um, Falcon Air, Falcon Aviation, uh, and into our own base uh, facility that is uh, purpose built for our use. Um, since uh, that last meeting, uh, thank you, Mike, we had the opportunity to tour uh, a parcel of land that is adjacent to the um, air traffic control tower that we understand is, uh, is potentially available. And I think uh, you've had correspondence from Boston MedFlight that we are interested in that property. We have engaged a construction company to help us with design and construction and scoping of the type of facility that we would need to build there. Uh, Columbia Construction Company, uh, they're out of Billerica. They actually built the hangar that we have uh, in Bedford. Uh, if anyone has been to uh, Bedford recently, you can see a, a product of their construction. Um, and we have a, we have a, a several years uh, relationship with them and they do fine work. So we engage them to help us to scope out a, a, a appropriate facility. Um, we toured the piece of property, uh, as I said, uh, with the construction company to kind of get an idea of cost and what would be involved to build a facility on that piece of property. And then at Mike's recommendation, we um, also toured uh, a parcel on the north, adjacent to the north ramp next to Jacobs Engineering uh, over there to look at that piece of property uh, also. The construction company took uh, measurements and information and did some research and uh, came up with uh, kind of a scope of work for us for both of those properties. Um, their recommendation is that uh, although the piece of property on the south ramp next to the tower um, could be used, um, it would probably be very costly for us to uh, do site preparation on that parcel of land to bring it down to grade level so that it could be uh, accessing the taxiway. Anyone who's familiar with it knows it sits up on a rise and we would have to uh, do a, a good bit of excavation in order to put a, uh, to put a, a hangar there that would access the taxiway. Um, we're not turning that off at all because we want to make sure that uh, that it's it, it, that it's not somewhere we want to go. But we're going to be requesting from the commission um, approval for us to investigate that piece of property on the north ramp. Uh, we have looked at that piece of property. Uh, we are looking at something that in the neighborhood of an eight thousand square foot hangar. Uh, that hangar would fit on the south ramp property, however, would be very tight. And as I said, the, the excavation and site preparation costs would be would be fairly high. So uh, as I said, I'll follow this up with correspondence, but we'd like approval to be, begin investigating a piece of property on the adjacent to the north ramp next to Jacobs Engineering to see if that piece of property would be suitable um, for construction of a, of a hangar for us. Uh, as I said, the hangar we're looking at is probably about 8,000 square feet. 
It would be um, obviously to house our helicopters as well as maintenance facility for the helicopter, um, crew, crew facilities, office space, as well as um, a garage for our ground ambulance. We, we keep ground ambulances at all of our bases so that if the weather is unflyable, we can use the crew and ground ambulance to do uh, critical care transport. Uh, so that's pretty much where we are right now. Uh, our timeline is probably um, 12 to 24 months uh, before we would be uh, looking at, at, at building something there uh, and putting it into our budget, getting approval from our board of trustees. But at this point, we're looking at uh, available property and scope of work and what would be suitable for, um, for Boston Med Flight. Um, so Charlie, is there anything I missed in there in that discussion? I don't believe so, no. Okay. So, um, um, Madam Chair, is there anything Chair, else? Is there anything like else? Like information? information? Anybody have any questions? Mike, from your vantage point, is, with that north property, you see any issues with that? Uh, actually, no, it's probably the easier to develop of the two sites. And we had that discussion when we were there. And um, I think it's a good fit and there's enough area out there that they can build to their need and it eliminates the obviously the uh, site work that's going to have to be done as well as the line of sight no pun intended from the control tower which is a big issue right. okay um, we can't we can't obscure, obscure that what i would like though is i don't want to keep that piece in abeyance um rick do you think what time frame will you have a decision that you're going to go north or south um, the, the design company or construction company um, is retaining a civil engineering firm for us, and they believe that um, sometime after the first of the year, they'd be able to scope it out and figure out if, in fact, the, the north ramp property would work for us. So um, a, a few months. Okay. Okay. No other questions? Okay. So, Mike, do we... Should I make a motion to table this or put it back into old business? Or? I would keep it under old business, Madam Chair, if you could. Okay. All right. And so do we have a motion? We'll follow it up with a letter to the commission asking permission to investigate uh, construction on the North Ramp parcel. Which would then become okay. new business. Okay. So do I, do I need a vote to have it go back into the old business or no? Just... I believe you do. Okay. All right. Any other questions from the board? No? All right, if we don't, can we have a, um, a motion to put it into old business? I'll Out. make a motion, Collins, make a motion to put that item back into old business. Okay, do we have a second? Second, Dan Foley. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, great. Thank you very much, Rick, and thank you very much, Charlie. You're welcome to stay or you're welcome to go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you very Thank much. You I think I'll leave. We'll look forward to working with you again. All right. Thank thanks. you. Bye. 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 Um. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else on the lease? Uh, no, nothing other than to just suggest that uh, let the record reflect that Commissioner Collins did join uh, approximately at six twenty. Okay. Uh, six uh, thirty-five. I think just a little late. Thank you, and I apologize for technical issues here. That's You're okay. worth waiting for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, do we have a motion on the floor to accept the lease committee report? I, I make a motion that we accept the lease committee report. Second. Second, Bob. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Great. Thank you very much, Bill, and thank you very much, Michael. Uh, airport security procedures. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, okay. The security cameras are up and running. The system is working uh, uh, as much as it can. There, there is a punch list that's uh, being addressed uh, on uh, on certain things that have to be uh, fixed and uh, and reworked. Uh, and uh, the the people are coming out. Uh, this next Monday on uh, November 22nd uh, to further address that. Uh, so that's that's basically it for the, uh, with, with the security thing. There is, <clears throat> there's some good news that's coming along um, regarding the uh, security system. Uh, and uh, 
and Mike uh, can elaborate on it. Uh, he's been in contact with, uh, with uh, people from the state and uh, with what they're, what they're thinking about doing uh, could greatly improve, uh, um, add to, uh, to, to the system that we have. So I'll leave it up to him to, uh, to explain that or not. Uh, he might wanna wait until, uh, until it's actually approved. Well, I, I will take the baton and I don't know much, but yesterday afternoon I received a phone call from uh, Owen Silbaugh from MassDOT Aeronautics, the gentleman that spearheaded our new system we have today. And he told me that um, there's the company that manufactured our system, Vigilant, was out at the conference that I attended last month and he struck up a conversation with them and they have a, a recognition software module that goes to the program that we have. And uh, they were very excited about utilizing it on the airports in the Commonwealth. And they've offered to uh, install it with additional cameras as well as additional software into the system uh, to make it function. And it's a type of software that you can program unusual behavior or events into it so that when the camera picks up something, like it's a walkway that shouldn't have vehicles on it, it will trigger an alert and an alarm. Or if you're out on the airfield side, it can pick up a deer, geese, any, any animals on the airfield as well. Uh, it's able to identify it through the software. Um, so they want to be a proof of concept. Uh, they want to use us as a proof of concept location. And they are willing to come in and install additional cameras, improve the quality of the cameras we have, upgrade the software package that we have, and uh, run it as, a, a, as an experiment, for lack of a better term, uh, to prove that it can work. And then they want to take it statewide uh, after they prove the concept at Lawrence. So Owen wasn't able to get into too many details. Um, he just had the conversation himself with the Vigilant, but they're going to uh, tie it down and um, get back to me. So hopefully by mid-December, he said, I should be hearing from him. So I think we will have a much more enhanced camera uh, system at the airport uh, at the end of this, which would be beneficial for helping us. It, at, after hours, it can pick up geese on the runway, which would have been helpful when that aircraft, the Challenger, came in and struck the geese. Um, I think it was in August. So tower was closed. The camera would have picked it up as a, as a because it also has infrared. I, yeah, from what I'm led to believe, that's how it picks up the animals at night. Um, and it would send an alert that there are animals on the runways or, or out on the airfield. So it would be very helpful for wildlife management. Sounds exciting. Would it uh, also detect uh, two-legged animals? It will. If they're not supposed to be out there, it will pick up people yeah. out on the field. It will. And that's that's what they're saying. It can have facial recognition components to it. I don't know how deep it goes. This is just we just scratched the surface, but it's intended to be used like indoors. Um, what he described it to me was they were looking for a child that was abducted in an amusement park and it was able to go through and they had a picture of the child. The system filled it out, everybody. And it won't do if it's close enough they will keep it in there because they don't want the technology to possibly make a mistake, but they will filter out and it will identify where that child was last picked up in the cameras. And then they will dispatch personnel to that location to look for the child. So yeah, it can, it can pick up uh, two-legged animals, four-legged animals. Uh, it seems like it's an incredible piece of software. So we'll see how it goes, but it is premature to get into the, the weeds on it because it just from the stories he's told me, it sounds fantastic, mm -hmm. but I'll have more information probably middle, middle part of December. Yeah, I'm sure right, we any can. Other questions? That, uh, any other that sounds great. I, I had the opportunity uh, yesterday to see some of those cameras in action and I, I would applaud everybody who was involved in it. It's a really great system. Awesome. Very well. Any other questions for the airport security? No, well, that's it for it. All right. So do we have a motion on the floor to accept? Motion on the floor to accept the airport security. Second. Do we have a second? A second. Second, Bob. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much, Mr. Foley, Commissioner Foley. Um, we did the old business, no table matter. Uh, new business, communication from North Andover Town Manager, Melissa Rodriguez. 
Yes, Madam Chair, you may recall this letter I sent out prior to the October. I just wanted to follow it up with putting it on the agenda because I did have an opportunity to, number one, start the uh, log as the town manager asked of us, and, and number one, and I think Commissioner Irving, you're the, you asked about how many complaints they'd received and whether they were anonymous. I did ask her for that information and uh, I don't have it as of yet but hopefully I will have that. Uh, we did start the log and as you suspected the calls, we've had six calls since uh, I took the log, uh, started the log. Four of them are from two people. Uh, one person called within a minute after uh, this first complaint, but they were on activities that were normal. Um, the person who called from the town of North Andover lives right on the approach to runway five. He was complaining about the state police doing a practice. They're uh, doing touch and goes with their helicopter. And the other person uh, was calling from, it seems to be helicopters, the other person calling from the Glen Forest section of Methuen. So anyone who's familiar with Methuen, it's down Haverhill mm -hmm. Street, almost by 93. Uh, and um, the Barker School, it's now why, why I'm dating myself, but why WCA, I believe, in our, um, St. Teresa's Parish down in there, that's uh, that's where she resides in that neighborhood, Elm Street off of Elm Street. And she was complaining about helicopters as well, but they were the survey helicopters that were in the area. And uh, uh, the town of Methuen's police department called us because again, a helicopter, the state police were flying in Methuen and I keep, Apparently they had their, their light on, they were looking for somebody and the light went into Raymond Turkey Farms, turkey barns, and it agitated the turkeys. So the farm <laughs> called the police and said there was a helicopter shining a light in their barns and turkeys were upset. So, um, and then the final one was a woman who resides in North Andover and she lives off of Main Street and the condominiums in Sutton Pond and she was just complaining about traffic. The, you know, the planes flying around, sometimes over her house, sometimes near her house, but it was a normal routine traffic. Um, as I explained to, to her, we, our goal is to stop the unnecessary noise, but there is going to be inherent noise with the operation of machinery. And uh, as long as the pilots are doing what they're supposed to do, um, there's nothing I could do about it. Their, their pilots' credentials, their federal license trumps my authority. But number one on her list, the town manager's list, we are doing and we're actively uh, monitoring and we'll develop if there's a, a pattern. Uh, so far, most of the complaints have been not from the town of North Andover. And uh, they uh, typically, uh, I think Commissioner Irving thought they would be, it's the same person uh, calling about the behavior. Um, so we're working on that. I did speak with Mr. George Pentelli from the FAA's compliance office in the New England region. And I asked him about the remaining two points on the town manager's list. Number two, which was to uh, con commission a study to determine whether or not the, the, the demographic shift or the housing development in the town warrants a, a change of the flight patterns. He indicated it does not violate the grant assurances to commission such a study, but he just wondered about the appropriateness of it given that the nature of airport that we have and that they're being mature neighborhoods around the airport and established and that these calls aren't necessarily coming from people from developments that were just built. Um, he's thinking that an educational forum may be better than spending a lot of time and money. As he did say, someone has to pay for that and they're not gonna fund it because it doesn't rise to that level that the FAA would get involved. He did indicate if we do choose or find a funding source, we would have to include the proper lines of FAA business um, and traffic specifically uh, involved with it because it's gonna impact uh, the traffic patterns and make sure that people didn't think they could just arbitrarily stop moving things around. But um, his suggestion was that we move forward with a, an educational component first and talk with the town manager, invite her up to the control tower and have the air traffic control tower explain why they do things and how they do things. Uh, he believed that that should go a long way in his experience. But um, for number two, we would not run afoul if we were to conduct the study. Number three, we would. Uh, the request to engage in discussions about curtailing the uh, touch and go operations or the practice operations and reduce the hours. He said that would be a violation of our grant assurance number 22 regarding economic non-discrimination. And particularly, uh, he said it will make the airport, we have to make the airport available as an airport to the public use on reasonable terms. 
and without unjust discrimination to all types, kinds, and classes of aeronautical activity. So if we were to restrict the touch and goes, you indicated that would be a violation. We would violate our grant assurances with the FAA. So I just wanted to uh, advise you of my findings. And if we could, Madam Chair, if we could keep this in the old business, because I'd like to report back to the town manager of, of what I found and where we stand at this time and invite her to come out to the airport and get up into the control tower. And uh, maybe I'll work with the control tower chief to see what would be a convenient time and format to do this. And then um, follow Mr. Pentelli's suggestion of starting with an education campaign. All right, thank you very much. Do we have a motion on the floor to remove this and put it to old business? So move, Dan Foley. Do we have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks, Mike. All right. Airport manage, uh, Airport managers report. You're up, Mike. Right. I will be brief because I know the Patriots are on tonight. <gasps> That's right. <laughs> okay. um, first and foremost, all staff is doing well. No COVID impacts with uh, staff or, or family members of the staff. Uh, we did, unfortunately, have a sad uh, experience this month since we last met. I, we all are aware, of, and um, thank you for everybody who responded back, uh, expressing your condolences. We, we lost Commissioner Fitzpatrick uh, in two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Trying to remember the exact date, um, but um, Jack has been on the commission for in excess of 17 years. August was first of November. Yeah. Yeah. First of November he passed. So this his 17th anniversary was in. Uh, he was appointed in August, and his first meeting was in September of 2004. Does that make it 17 years? Um, he has sat in every seat. So every one of you here, Madam <laughs> Chair, he was in your seat several times. He was in the leasing. I don't know that he ever sat in finance, but he was in security. Um, he was a, a valuable member of the commission over the years and he would be missed. His family was very appreciative of the commissioners. Commissioner Collins was able to make it. Uh, Charlie Kalafalos came out of retirement and he attended as well wearing his airport commission jacket. And uh, on behalf of the commission, flowers were sent to the family to express sympathy. Uh, and they were, they were very gracious. I did not realize this, that Jack's father served on the airport commission. Well, Commissioner Collins was able to give me a time period to look back and he started uh, in the seventies and worked right through until the eighties. And uh, he uh -huh. too was almost on there for 16, 17 years. So uh, it seems to be a Fitzpatrick tradition to serve on the Lawrence <laughs> airport yeah. commission. So uh, Jack was a good friend to anyone that knew him. Um, unfortunately, I wish many of you had seen him 10 years ago. Uh, as time moved on, he had some health issues and maybe he didn't attend as often or he seemed a little bit uh, distracted, but um, he was very active, but sharp mind and very involved when he first got on right up until um, you know, a couple of years ago when his health started to decline. So he will be missed. But, so yes, uh, the family was very gracious and welcoming. I think Commissioner Collins, is there anything you'd like to add? I know you had some conversation with the daughter. No, I think it was nice that we, uh, you know, if we, if we could make it, if we could show up as a body, uh, they took a little comfort in that. We, of course, uh, I even related that Jack's father was the janitor at my school when I was a kid. So yeah. he, he went, you know, known the family a long time, more or less. But it was, yeah. uh, it, was um, it was nice to see Charlie there, too. It was great to see Charlie Koafalos. Yeah, was, Wait, was that at the Rollins? Was that at the Rollins bill? Uh, Starro. The star, get out. That was Mr. Yeah. Fitzpatrick. Sure. Yeah. Wow. He used to remember at the end of the year. I'll just go off uh, range yeah. for a second. All the balls that were on the roof. That was the yes. big day, the last day of school. He threw all the balls down yeah, to us. Yeah. That yeah. is so funny. Wow. And then later, actually, I, I was his mailman when he lived at St. Alfio's. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think he was the only Irishman in there. <laughs> Great guy. Great guy. Yep. They readmit Danya. Yeah, it was, it's, it's a sad day, but it's good that we could talk funny stories because bring a smile to our faces. He was a good guy. Um, moving along, I had an opportunity to meet with the superintendent of Oak School again. You may recall uh, we met several months ago, and they are really excited about the prospects of developing an AMP program, an airframe and power plant. Um, 
program at the Vogue School where their, their students can graduate after four years with a federal license. Uh, and hopefully they're looking to develop a partner with a college or university so they can go on to get their college degree as well. But uh, we met with Nick Flamia from Lawrence Air Motive and John McGordy from MBM Helicopters, both of which have M uh, A&P licenses. And they as well, I've been invited to serve on a, a steering committee um, to try to help develop the curriculum and program. So we'll be moving forward and their, their goal is, they said to me, to actually have a base on the airport. So they're looking to work primarily with an FBO that has the space or the ability to build them a hangar, and then they would lease it back. And I know that they've had some preliminary discussions with um, Nick Flamia from Lawrence Air Motive. So we're happy to see that. Um, and they've got the blessing from the Department of Education to move forward on this because of the fact that, and I'm, I'm learning as I go along, a and licenses aren't limited to aircraft. They, that according to Nick and John, about 50% of the people who go through the program don't go into aviation. They're off into other facets of uh, assembly line, forklift, elevator. He said there are a lot of companies that hire AMP uh, mechanics and they don't even touch uh, an aircraft. They move on because of the hydraulics and the electric and everything else that they know. Um, they're very valuable. So the, the vocational school is very excited about developing a program because of the prospects of employment afterwards. So I'm, I'm happy to see that happening. Um, I'll continue to advise when we have meetings, but uh, it, right now I think the vote was going back to put together a proposal for the Department of Education, identifying who will be on their steering committee and then taking the next steps to develop the curriculum. Probably gonna see something materialize within two to three years. Mm. I expect um, they're, they're really excited about it. So they're gonna move quickly. Um, oh. I'm not gonna get, I'm sorry, someone had a question. Okay, I won't get into the projects to be brief. I'll let Dom from Stantec do that. Um, but one thing I do have to ask of the commission, much like we did when we had our surplus uh, truck, when we bought a new truck, we have a piece of equipment uh, that was graciously donated to us, but it's exceeded its useful life. It's a bobcat or a skid steer as commonly known, and it doesn't function anymore. So I'd like to put it out on the auction site to dispose of it. But the first step in doing so is it has to be declared surplus by the governing body over it, which is the airport commission. So if I could have a vote to declare the skid steer surplus so that it could be uh, put on the auction site, um, that's part of the disposition process of the chapter 30B. And we did it for the pickup truck and uh, received a significant amount of money. We were all surprised at how much we received for that. So I'd like to do that with the skid steer as well. We have a motion on the floor. I'll, I'll make a motion that we put that piece of apparatus and declare it surplus. Second. Second by Donny Amador. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank all right, you. Thank for you it. for that vote. And that's all I have. And for any to answer any questions that the commission may have. How's the uh, restaurant you want, Mike? Very busy. Uh, Commissioner Irving, you've been there. The, I think uh, you've, you've seen the crowds they've got. They Today was a very, very busy day for them. Uh, the an aircraft, JCB uh, makes, I think, backhoes and front end loaders or stuff, heavy equipment. They had a plane fly in and they were taking some of the distributors uh, somewhere, maybe on a vacation. Uh, there were a lot of them, but they're all in the restaurant this morning about seven o'clock having breakfast and getting ready to get on the plane. So, um, yeah, that's he's been. I've seen him extremely busy uh, during for both breakfasts and lunches. All right. Any other questions for Mike? Yeah, I I have a question, Mike. Will you be replacing that skid steer? Probably not. Uh, the the, general, the because of the vent track that we have, it gets into the tight locations that we expected to use the skid steer um, because. We didn't have the vent track at the time. The vent track now has the snow blower attachment that gets right into the space and removes the snow rather than having to bucket it out, it blows it out. So we're gonna utilize the vent track for the same purposes we would have used a skid steer for. On the airfield side, in terms of construction, we have the, the John Deere loader, which, which is sufficient. We primarily took possession of it for snow removal operations, and then it just became unnecessary. The only reason why I say that is that uh you know when you have these skid steers you can get attachments namely a, a, a sweeping broom yeah uh, that you can put on that thing and it would make your goose 
poops. Uh, <laughs> <remote> Problem <laughs> go away. Oh, they'll have competing employees out there who can broom it off quicker. Well, I won't say never, but um, I, there's no plans on it because we already have equipment now that can handle the needs that we would have used the skid steer for. Um, and it's good to know that those attachments are available for them as well. I know I've seen like uh, post hole digging and other stuff on them, but I've never saw the broom. So um, it's good to know it's out there as an option, but at this time there are no plans to replace it. Thanks. Anyone else? All right, if not, do we have a motion on the floor to accept the manager's report? So moved, Dan Foley. Do we have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, great. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. Uh, public comments? Yeah, Bob, do you want to go first or do you want me to go? I'll go first. All right. Okay. Uh, nice to see everybody, and uh, I hope everybody has a happy holiday coming up. Um, so, a couple things. Uh, we're going to share some commentary today, uh, Dom and I. Uh, on the master plan, the update is right now we're going to be planning to uh, send the alternatives uh, chapter uh, to the to the ship, to the stakeholders, which are basically the airport, the uh, Mass Dot Aeronautics, and uh, FAA for review. Um, it's still on schedule, and we're hoping that um, sh uh, shortly after the first of the year, we'll be able to um, get a final draft that can be uh, reviewed and um, accepted by all the parties. So, a little bit, a little bit of an update on that. Uh, and then uh, on the, uh, the waste pile on the north side of the field, the glass pile, uh, I was just informed today by our environmental services folks, uh, Bob Nicolaro, who's managing that for Dom and I, uh, that they have received the uh, monitoring well analysis information. They got it Friday and they're in the process of taking a look at it. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, our understanding is that we're going to try to get that report to the airport manager uh, prior, uh, prior to the CONCOM's um, next meeting, which I believe is December 8th. Uh, and our understanding is we probably need to get that about a week or so plus, which probably falls into the November 28th or 29th. Uh, time frame, and we'll we can we can uh, coordinate that uh, offline, Mike. Uh, but just uh, that's kind of the uh, latest on that. Thank you. Dom. Yeah, I can update on the other projects. Um, <laughs> the airfield lighting vault is going to be delivered the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Um, so that's some good news because we had been waiting on that for a while. Um, so that building is precast concrete and they've already done the build out of the of the interior at the precast plant. So things like the HVAC unit, uh, the you know heating, ventilating and air conditioning and the lights and the receptacles will all be installed when the building arrives. And then um, once they set the building, the contractor will then work on bringing the power to it um, they've already installed the underground conduit, so it's just be pulling power through the, the conduits they've already installed, and then installing the other equipment, which will ultimately power and control the runway and taxiway lights. So um, they still, you know, even once they get the building set, they still have a good amount of work. Um, but hopefully, you know, hopefully by Christmas, it should be uh, up and running. Um, and then nothing else to add on the security project other than um, they're going to be working on the punch list like Commissioner Foley mentioned. And then I think that just leaves the Taxiway Charlie realignment project that we've started working on. Um, we're in the preliminary design stage of that and just continuing to push ahead. And then probably... Um, Next month, we will have a drill rig at the airport to 
perform about 20 10 foot deep borings to collect soil samples, which will then be analyzed at a lab. And then we use that data to design the, the pavement structure for the, for the taxiway. Um, I think that's, Mike, did I miss anything else on any projects or? Oh, that's you, you that's all everything. I have. Okay. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions? I guess not. Okay. Any questions for Bob or Dom? No. All right. Thank you very much. Um, commissioners, anybody want to add anything? No. All right. So our next meeting will be December 16th. Correct. And I just want to thank everyone for attending and Everybody have a nice, happy Thanksgiving. This year, everybody can share it with their families instead of being mm -hmm. stuck home alone. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I know, go, huh? Go Patriots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do Excuse I me, Sharon. It's Carla. I, I wanted to ask, normally we take December off. Are we not doing that this year? Oh, shoot. That's right. This is November. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, all right, so do I have a motion on the floor to miss um, December's meeting unless it is imperative that Mike needs a vote, we will have a short Zoom meeting. Okay, I make a motion that we uh, skip December unless Mike needs us badly. <laughs> I always need you guys. <laughs> All right. Do we have a second? Second, yeah, Bob. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Carla, for reminding me. I this year's just gone by so fast. <laughs> so in that case, if I don't see anybody, happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, Happy this Hanukkah, Happy New Year. Happy New Year's. Oh, wait, <laughs> our, next <laughs> our next meeting will be. <laughs> January 20. Uh, January 20th. Perfect. All right. All right. And um, with that being said, go Pats. And do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion Nobody? to adjourn. <laughs> do we have a second? Second, Dan Foley. All right. All in favor? Bye. Bye. Happy holidays. Thank you all. Happy, <laughs> holidays. Happy holidays. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.